Hey, welcome everybody. Major General Greg Knight here. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Black History Month. Um, we've been recognizing Black History Month, obviously, all month uh, through a number of different venues and different messages. So I'm, I'm joined with uh, Tech Sergeant Kirby Addison and uh, Staff Sergeant Selena Correa. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Thank you General. Uh, so let's talk about Black History Month. Um, it, it's a conversation, and, and I, I think I know why it's important to me, but why are we having this conversation, Kirby? Well, General Knight, I want to thank you for having us here again today. And the first word that comes to mind when we talk about black history, to me, why it's important, is progress. There's history that we should not repeat in this nation again. People had ideologies and actions taken against people of color that we cannot repeat again. So in order to be the best nation that we can be, we have to progress and be better. The second word that comes to mind is role-playing. And I believe that not everyone in the past can get to the level of being a Martin Luther King Jr. or Rosa Parks. I believe they're supporting role players such as James Baldwin, Angela Davis, the Black Panthers. And I believe I can play a role in history that can change, that can make a change towards equality, get rid of racism, and truly be inclusive. No, nope, I agree with you, Kirby. Mm -hmm. and I think that's, those are great points, and, and you've heard me say it before, and I will keep saying it uh, for me. Mm -hmm. Good ideas don't have a rank. I think everybody in this sure. organization has a role in making the exact change that you're talking about, so good, good feedback. I appreciate it. So why is it important to you, Slim? Super simple, sir. Uh, it is important to me. It is a reminder of everything that my ancestors have gone through. Um, it is a reminder of all of the accomplishments they've made, and also a time for me to reflect um, and celebrate everything that they've done. So I can sit here right now and have this conversation with you, so I can wear my uniform proudly and serve my country as an equal and not three-fifths of a person. We talk a lot about diversity and inclusion. And we did, on the 4th of December, um, we did a professional development day. Mm -hmm. And I actually I asked the Naval War College to come up here and talk about leadership ethics and ethical decision making. And of course, part of the conversation was diversity and inclusion. And one of the things, it's a very simple vignette, and I can't take credit for it, I don't remember exactly who said it, but it was diversity is being asked to the party. Inclusion is being asked to dance. To dance, yes. So how do we as an organization get at that? You know, I don't think there's like an easy answer to it. It's going to take some time. Um, the work we need to do now is trying to get everybody to have those uncomfortable conversations with each other, um, interacting with people who are different. You know, uh, that's probably the simplest thing I can give you right now because there's no, there's no like hard, this is what we're going to do and the world's going to be a great place. There's going to be no racist and no one's going to say, you know, something hurtful. Um, that's, that's all I got. <laughs> no, that's fine. Kirby, how do we become more inclusive? Uh, I just want to echo what Selena said, and I don't think there's a one answer. I guess I'll give you two practical actions that I think we as the National Guard can take, mm -hmm. and I think leaders that serve under you and above me and Selena can take action by using the resources that JDEC provides attending the events that we put on and also just approaching someone that doesn't look like them, mm -hmm. a person of color and having a candid professional conversation. So the two things is utilizes the tools and resources that JDEC provides mm -hmm. and just having a conversation with a person of color within your organization and the leaders can also reach out to the people in their communities that doesn't look like them and maybe in turn that can affect recruitment. What do you think the impact and result of JDEC has been from your point of view? I think, one, it's important because we're talking about it. Comes mm -hmm. back to that communication piece. Are we where we need to be yet? I would say no. But when I look at the, at the effort at, at kind of revising the strategic plan and nesting that with the plans for the guard mm -hmm. and that focus, I think that's the direction we need to go. I think that's a healthy conversation. Um, but I also know that having a plan, having a policy, mm -hmm. drafting a memo, all the right intentions are only as effective as their implementation. So really it's a sustainment and, and 
kind of putting a bow on something and finishing it and saying, hey, we got to our end state, mm -hmm. whatever that is. Um, but we can't just have meetings for the sake of having mm -hmm. meetings. I think we align, we know our goals, we've got our lines of effort, we know what our end state is. But it comes back to what you said, Kirby, it's having that continuing conversation. Uh, that That's going to be important. Um, but I, I just think what I'm seeing is the degree of involvement. And, and again, one of the important things that I've learned in my time in the military, sometimes you'll get better results asking and not telling, speaking and not yelling, right? Because people don't respond to that. They'll shut you out. But if you have, if I look at the success, and this is your idea, having the, 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 the social justice um, forums halls, that we did. The town halls. The town halls. Those were great. What a great format. We talked about it before. Did we get to the hard question? No. No. We had a good start. We don't just leave it. So I think we come back to it, and it's something that we sustain. And, and I've been doing some research. So your point was valid, Selena. Mm -hmm. we, we have a conversation, but it makes you think. Mm -hmm. So I did some research. And this has, this has impact on Vermont. So I learned, I don't know if you knew this, that of our military, all branches, all components, nearly 50% of the military is comprised of women and minorities. Yep. I didn't Not true in Vermont. No. Working to fix that. Um, obviously, our demographic is our demographic, but it's very important. Um, but when I look at my my next initiatives that I'm working on, I think we think too small. Yes. When I'm talking about recruiting, we're we're focusing on Vermont. We have a globe to focus on. That's absolutely right. I have right. active duty installations of every component, every branch, with people leaving the service. If they're first term enlistees first-term commissioned officers and they're going on to do something else, mm -hmm. why not come to Vermont? Right. Now you want to talk big picture. Now we're improving the diversity of not only the Vermont National Guard, but the diversity in, in the in population the of Vermont. Yeah. Uh, and that's, to me, yeah, it's a pretty lofty goal, um, but I think it's important for us as a state, certainly as a nation, and absolutely for us as a guard. That's why it's important that we're here doing the events at JDEC, the observances, all the town halls. Yep. To, to get everybody here ready and prepared for future people that are coming in. Because yeah. we want them to come in and stay. We want to mm -hmm. retain them, you know. And if they come here, if they get here and they feel uncomfortable or someone says something that maybe they don't mean, but it comes off as racist, mm -hmm. that person, they're not going to want to stay here. They're going to be like, why did I make this choice? Well, this see, is this not comes, the place back, for me. comes back again to professional candor, right? Mm -hmm. That should be where the conversation ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, me, anybody, the bystander effect, who hears yes. that, right. Good point, sir. you immediately say, well, hold on. This is not okay. Right. And if it's something <laughs> that's egregious enough that you simply can't address it, then you go to the state equal employment mm -hmm. manager. You go to an equal opportunity Absolutely. leader. You go to your chain of command. I have an open door policy. You come talk to me. Absolutely. Because if I don't allow the system to work and adjudicate it properly and get those caustic influences out, mm -hmm. We're not going to change anything. That's right. So. We're not going to retain people, and we're not that, going to that's be a, in particular the fighting force that we are. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Absolutely. Upstanding. Thank you, sir. So both of you have been working on, on a podcast. That's right, sir. So, Sydney, so yes. can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, that those conversations that we were talking about just now, the uncomfortable ones. Um, we were going to be talking about various topics on our podcast. We have. Um, we do a call to action, which we, where we challenge you to do something practical out in the community, whether it be shopping at a BIPOC business. Um, we're gonna we're looking into books to review, um, to recommend to people. We have buzzwords that we do so, uh, that we talk about. So, a buzzword would be, uh, for instance, we had the first episode was I think diversity was it diversity the first one BIPOC BIPOC which is black indigenous people of color. Mm -hmm. Many people around us don't know that. I just found out what, what it was. <laughs> I had like to look it month, up. I'm like, they kept I had to look it up. Like, what's a I, I kept, it was, it's a new, because it's a, it's a fairly new term. And so it's, it's one of those things you're just like, uh, I have no idea what they're talking about, but I'm going to smile and nod, you know? And so I had to look it up. So black indigenous people of color. Um, and we just want, we're going to, uh, Hopefully, we're hoping Kirby's idea to take it outside of the military, but I, I prefer to keep it internal for now, um, just to get the information out to our soldiers, help them to help them become more inclusive. So that's a, another way um, that we can get them comfortable. So if, if somebody wants to listen into this, the, the podcast, where, where would they go? 
currently it's on teams um but also if they have questions that they want to ask us um because because we're the different people that we're talking about right mm -hmm. you can they can shoot us an email at courageous voices podcast at gmail.com and then we'll get in there we're going to be very humble and open and we're not going to be offended there's no reason to because we want to help our our community which is our our service members no, it's great. Great initiative, and thanks for doing it. Thank you, so, courageousvoices at gmail.com. Courageous no. Voices <laughs> Podcast. I told them it was too long. <laughs> <laughs> it was, so I, so I did the YouTube account first, and that was the. Okay. So, it, what is it? So, it's Courageous, Courageous Voices Podcast, Podcast at gmail.com. Gmail. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you got that. Courageous Voices Podcast at gmail.com. It's long. But it tells a story. Yeah, all right. That, that's it. good. That's good. Well, good. Thanks for making time. Thank you. Thank you, John. I appreciate time. your contributions and uh, looking forward to continuing working with you on it. Yes. Absolutely. We appreciate your support and, and your encouragement. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for being here. <laughs>